Thank you for tuning in. Today I'm going to start something new on the channel. I'm going to uh, create a playlist centered around this Pluto X drone. In this case, I'm actually going to share as I learn about this hardware. Now, Pluto X is from a company known as Drona Aviation. They're an Indian-based company, and one of the co-founders, uh, I believe he's the CTO, Prasanna, reached out to me and asked if I would talk about this drone since it's targeted at developers and one thing that I want to do and we get asked a lot is can DroneBlock support any other drones uh, beyond DJI that might be programmable and be able to interface with our block programming environment and I don't know if this is going to be possible after talking with Prasanna he mentioned we could use their SDK and make it compatible with DroneBlock so that being said I'm going to share this process on my channel. And I'll start out by uh, showing you guys the hardware. It's a little mini drone that has a Wi-Fi. It also contains a 20 pin header, uh, I believe 16 GPIO, uh, some MOSFET drivers, H-Bridge, and a few other things. Now, I'm not too familiar with the hardware. I'll definitely share more as I get further into understanding what's going on. You can see we have a nice 600 milliamp hour tattoo lipo battery and I've gone ahead and charged it it's got a micro USB cable you can just plug it in to your computer and get a charge there and go ahead and power it up I'll show you some of the modules that came with this Pluto X these are actually I believe able to plug into the 20 pin header there's a camera module this hybrid not sure what that is yet but uh, we'll dive into that in an upcoming video spare parts i'm assuming there's going to be spare propellers uh, even a couple of spare motors as well and then table tennis i believe this is the ability to uh, sense and do some object detection i've seen some videos of pluto x being able to follow a ping pong ball. That will be a cool experiment that uh, we'll dive into in an upcoming video. Now what I want to do is take a look at their onboarding page and see if we can get uh, Pluto X in the air. So this is the link that's mentioned in the kit. It's the uh, DronaAviation.com slash onboarding page. I believe this is just a Google Doc. Talks about what's in the kit as well as some of the capabilities of the hardware. And the first thing I want to do, it looks like there is a Android and iOS app. I'm on my Android device. I'm in the Play Store. I'm going to search for Pluto. Looks like it's this Pluto controller by Drona Aviation. And over 10,000 downloads, four and a half stars. That all looks great. Let me go ahead and install it. Relatively small download, about four megabytes. I'm going to open it up. I'll just put my initials DB. I'm a developer. Let's fly. So far, I'm really impressed with the uh, UI. Very clean, simple. I'm going to skip that. It tells us we're not connected. Looks like this is a bit of an onboarding that shows our flight time, flight status developer mode apparently there's a flip function and we can see here we're not connected so Pluto is still powered up I'm going to go to my Wi-Fi settings and just see if we can find the uh, Pluto network okay so it is right here Pluto Dennis that network I believe was configured before it was shipped to me and we will use my password okay entered my password okay we got a connection now what I'll do is I'll go back to the app so let me just try tapping connect oh nice Still connected. you hear that that sounds a lot like if you guys remember uh, me covering droid planner or the tower app I wonder if this is sort of based off of that so it looks like we can arm the motors tells me that flip is not supported on the current firmware. I'm okay with that right now. We have drone settings, control settings, 
joystick tilt mode. Tilt mode is always one of those features. I think it's kind of a wow factor, but never really get excited about uh, tilting my device to control something. So it looks like there's some different skins. I'll just leave it on charcoal. Won't bore you guys with all the details as we get further into uh, understanding everything about Pluto X. I'll cover some more of this. Looks like we can update the firmware. What I'll do now is let's go ahead and try to see if we can get this in the air. Before I take off, just wanted to mention, I see this little aircraft icon, top right, shows me that this is the front of the aircraft. So take off with that pointing away from me. Okay, we got Pluto X on the ground. I guess what I can do now is arm it. So it's armed. And I'm going to assume that we're gonna to try to use our stick sequence that we do normally with uh, throttle down into the right and then our pitch and roll down into the left. Let me just give that a try. Okay, that looks like it's gonna work. Tablet down and just see if you guys can see me hovering here. Definitely um, definitely pretty touchy. Let me get a little more altitude. I, I really, to be honest, can't stand uh, controlling devices with an iPad or iPhone or tablet. Just makes it really challenging sometimes. But it handles very well, very responsive. have our flight time, battery life. Looks like we have attitude information as well. Let me go ahead and just land it, see how it handles. Now I'm actually trying to land or power off the motors, but it doesn't look like that's gonna work. So let me just see if I can disarm. Because if I let off, it's just gonna take off again. Okay, so the disarm actually got it on the ground. I know I mentioned I'm not a big fan of the uh, tilt configuration, but let's just see how it behaves. Go into tilt mode, and then I'll go back. I'm going to arm again. It looks like we can only tilt and control uh, pitch and roll. Let's see if I can do this. I'm gonna go ahead and arm. So I'm sort of leaning forward now. Hopefully you guys can see I'm leaning forward. I'm bringing it back. Still using my left sticks for throttle. Pitch forward. Kind of try to keep it level. I'll roll right, roll left, pitch forward. I don't know, it's kind of hard to see that. Definitely looks like tilt mode is working, working well. Once again, I still have to give yaw and throttle input on this left stick. So I'm gonna go ahead and just bring it down. Once again, it looks like I can only disengage the motors by disarming. It's an overview of control with these virtual joysticks as well as using uh, tilt mode on the device. Let me just show you guys something else I just discovered. We'll go to drone settings. See, we have accelerometer calibration. I'll just tap that. You can see that it's doing the calibration right there on the flat surface. Nice, and then I'm assuming magnetometer is actually gonna have me, I'm assuming magnetometer calibration is gonna have me hold Pluto X and do all sorts of stuff that I'm not gonna do right now. Also looks like we got a motor test. So let me just try this. I'm gonna tap spin all. That's pretty cool. Maybe I'll tap it again to stop. Yeah, then we can spin individual motors apparently. M3, M1, that's pretty cool. Sensor graphs. You can see how once we get further into this, uh, this data is gonna be very useful. Got a lot to learn here set our Wi-Fi values. So that's just what you see underneath the drone settings. So far, the interface is really incredible, the Android version. Now, I don't know anything about iOS, and I realize what I've demonstrated in this video is 
uh, definitely old news to a lot of you guys. We've seen all of this stuff before. What gets me really excited is diving into the SDK, uh, seeing how we program Pluto X, working with some of these modules like the camera, and ultimately seeing if I can make drone blocks compatible with this hardware because I think if we do, this is going to be a really interesting offering uh, to be able to have just a nice DIY setup that's highly configurable and programmable. One thing I did forget to mention, this frame is 3D printed. Obviously the propellers are not and these prop guards do not look 3D printed either, but definitely the frame. I've also seen there's a canopy or cover uh, that you can use to put over your electronics. That's it for now. I appreciate you guys following along. In an upcoming video, I'm going to dive in to more of what we need to do to program this guy. There is an IDE, apparently, and the firmware is open source, which is very cool. If you guys have any questions or comments, please post them below. And until next time, thanks for watching.